Welcome back. We will now begin with Chapter 1, Obtaining and Managing a Commission with Part A, the Eligibility for Appointment. Expectations for this webinar, Chapter 1, Obtaining and Managing a Commission. Part A is the eligibility for appointment. We'll discuss your residence and citizenship requirements as well as your age requirements, the course of study, the examination requirements along with a background check and your application. The background check is actually a live scan. Please remember to record your start time for this module on your timesheet provided in your workbook. Eligibility for appointment. The California Secretary of State appoints notaries public in California. The California Secretary of State may appoint as many notaries public as necessary for the public's convenience. To be eligible for appointment, a person must be a California resident at the time of appointment, unless appointed to serve on a military or naval installation, be at least 18 years of age, complete a six-hour course of study approved by the California Secretary of State, pass a written, proctored, closed book exam, and pass a live scan background check. All forms can be found on the California Secretary of State's website. Section 1, Resident Citizenship Requirement. Except for notary publics appointed to serve on military and naval reservations, a notary public appointed in California must be a resident of California at the time of appointment. Similarly, a notary public does not need to be a United States citizen. However, California law requires that a notary public appointed to serve on a military or naval reservation must be a United States citizen. All applicants for appointment must be at least 18 years of age. Course of study requirements. An applicant for a notary public commission must satisfactorily complete a six hour course of study that is approved by the California Secretary of State concerning the functions and duties of a notary public. Also an applicant for the notary public commission who holds an active notary public commission and has satisfactorily completed a six-hour notary public education course approved by the California Secretary of State must satisfactorily complete a minimum of three-hour refresher course approved by the California Secretary of State prior to the reappointment as a notary public. This course will satisfy that requirement. An individual whose commission expires before applying for a new commission must take an approved six-hour notary public education course before they can be appointed for another term as a notary public, even if the individual previously satisfactorily completed an approved six-hour course. Notary public who have satisfactorily completed another six-hour course within two years of applying for reappointment as a notary public have satisfied the three- or six-hour refresher course requirement every four years. The examination requirement, 
all applicants for appointment must pass a written, proctored, closed book examination prescribed by the California Secretary of State every four years. Background Check Requirement, also known as LifeScan. All applicants must complete a background check by submitting LifeScan fingerprints to the California Department of Justice within one year of satisfactorily completing the examination. The Department of Justice will compare the applicant's fingerprints and identity information with the California conviction records. The Department of Justice will forward the applicant's fingerprints and other identifying information to the Federal Bureau of Investigation in both the Department of Justice and the Fe Federal Bureau of Investigation will advise the California Secretary of State whether the applicant has a criminal record anywhere in the United States. An applicant convicted of a disqualifying crime may be denied appointment. A disqualifying crime is any felony or lesser offense involving moral turpitude or of a nature incompatible with the duties of a notary public. For more information about disqualifying crimes, please review the current notary public disciplinary guidelines available on the California Secretary of State's website. All applicants for appointment must complete the Notary Public Application Form prescribed by the California Secretary of State each time they apply for a commission. Whether they currently hold a commission as a Notary Public, a previous commission has expired, or they are applying for the first time. A Notary Public Application Form and information regarding the appointment process can be found on the California Secretary of State's website. The California Secretary of State must determine that an applicant possesses the required honesty, credibility, truthfulness, and integrity to fulfill the responsibilities of the Office of Notary Public. An applicant must disclose any arrest for which trial is pending and any convictions, whether the conviction may be disqualifying conviction and regardless of where and when the conviction occurred, including any convictions dismissed under the California Penal Code Sections 1203.4. Convictions and arrests for which a trial is pending must be disclosed on every application submitted to the California Secretary of State even those convictions that were disclosed on a previous application and including convictions dismissed under the California Penal Code Sections 1203.4. Failure to disclose any conviction or arrest for which a trial is pending may be a substantial and material misstatement or omission on the application and grounds for denial of an application for appointment. Other grounds for denying an application for appointment are detailed later in this course. The key point to remember is that the application for appointment as a notary public must be complete without any omission or misstatement of required information. Part B discusses the commission itself and the term of office. The term of office for a notary public is four years, starting with the commencement date stated in the commission issued by the California Secretary of State. This is true whether an appointment is for the first time or whether the person has been issued a previous commission. The critical starting date is the commencement date stated in the commission rather than the date the commission was issued or mailed by the California Secretary of State 
or the date that the commission was received by the person in the mail. However, a person cannot serve as a notary public until both their oath of office and bond have been filed with the county clerk, and both must be filed within 30 days of the commencement date of the four terms stated in the commission. A notary public commission issued by the California Secretary of State does not take effect unless the oath of office and bond are filed on time with the county clerk. If the 30-day deadline is missed, the commission is considered invalid. Geographic jurisdiction. A notary public's jurisdiction is not limited to the county in which the notary public's oath and bond are filed, but a California notary public cannot perform notarial acts outside of the borders of California. Additionally, a notary public appointed to serve on a military or naval reservation is authorized to act only within the boundaries of the reservation for which he or she is appointed. For example, Maria Mobile's principal place of business is in Truckee, California. Accordingly, Maria filed her oath and bond at the Nevada County Clerk's Office in Nevada County of California. Maria often travels to South Lake Tahoe in El Dorado County to perform notorial acts for residents there. Patrick Pressure asked Maria to come to his home in State Line, Nevada to perform an acknowledgement on a document to be filed in El Dorado County. Maria must first refuse to perform the acknowledgement in the state of Nevada. As an alternative, Maria may request that Patrick meet her in South Lake Tahoe of El Dorado County in California or any other convenient location within California to perform the acknowledgement. The bond. A notary public must obtain a bond from a California admitted surety insurer in the amount of $15,000. The bond must be filed with the county clerk of the county in which the notary public's principal place of business is located. The bond is to provide a limited fund to reimburse members of the public who are damaged by notarial misconduct. However, the notary public and the surety named on the notary public's official bond are liable in a civil action for all the damages sustained from a notary public's misconduct or neglect. For best practice tip, there may be personal liability for the notary public to the surety for the amount paid on the bond as damages and if the damages exceed the amount of the bond. Therefore, a notary public should consider purchasing errors and emissions insurance or some other type of liability insurance to cover damages that may occur in the course of performing their notarial duties. A negligent notary public may still be personally liable for damages, costs, and attorney fees exceeding insurance policy limits and for damages not covered by the insurance. Public Employee Notaries Public The California Secretary of State may appoint an employee of a California state, city, or county public agency or a public school district to serve as a notary public for and on behalf of that public entity. These notary public employees may only perform notarial acts for and on behalf of the public entity employer. These notary public employees are not authorized to perform notarial acts on their own time. These notary public employees must maintain personal control of their journal. The public entity employer may pay the cost of the notary public's bond and supplies and any fees collected by the notary public employee must be remitted or turned over to the public entity employer. 
If the notary public is terminated or resigns, the termination or resignation is treated as a resignation of the notary public's commission as well. On termination or resignation from employment with the public entity, the employee must immediately send written notice of resignation to the California Secretary of State. All notarial records must be delivered to the county clerk within 30 days, and the notary public seal must be defaced or destroyed. The California Secretary of State may appoint Federal Civil Service employees to serve as notaries public for military and naval reservations within the state of California. A notary public appointed to serve on a military or naval reservation must be a U.S. citizen, but does not have to be a California resident. These notaries public may perform notarial acts only on the reservation for which they were appointed and they cannot collect fees for any service. These notary public federal civil service employees must maintain personal control of their journal. If the notary public stops being a federal civil service employee, the commanding officer of the military or naval reservation must notify the California Secretary of State the termination and the termination is treated as a resignation of the Notary Public's Commission. Again, upon termination or resignation from employment with the military or naval reservation, all notarial records must be delivered to the county clerk within 30 days, and the Notary Public's seal must be defaced or destroyed. managing a commission, filing the oath, and bond. A notary public's commission takes effect on the date the notary public files their oath of office and the surety bond in the amount of $15,000 with the county clerk's office. A notary public must file both the oath and bond within 30 days of the commencement date stated in the commission. If the oath and bond are not filed within 30 days of the commencement date stated in the commission, the commission is invalid. There are no exceptions. The oath and bond must be filed with the county clerk in the county where the notary public maintains his or her principal place of business. The address entered in the business location portion of the notary public's most recent submitted notary public application is the notary public's principal place of business. A notary public with a new commission is permitted to take and subscribe the oath in front of another notary public as long as the oath is administered in the county where the oath and bond for the new commission will be filed. In such a case, the completed oath and bond must be sent by certified mail or other means of physical delivery that provides a receipt to the county clerk for filing. Your best practice tip, the oath of office should be taken and subscribed in person at the county clerk's office to avoid mail and processing delays. That may prevent the oath and bond from being filed by the county clerk's office on time. The commission will not be valid if mail or other processing delays prevent the oath and bond from being filed by the county clerk's office within 30 days of the commencement date stated in the commission. When a notary public visits the county clerk's office in person, an authorized employee of the county clerk will administer the oath of office, observe the notary public sign the oath, and file both the oath and bond the same day. 
the notary public must present an identification document meeting the requirements of the Civil Code Section 1185. Address Change The California law requires a notary public to notify the California Secretary of State of address changes to ensure that the California Secretary of State and members of the public are able to contact the notary public about notarial acts the notary public performed. Notaries public must notify the California Secretary of State by certified mail or any other means of physical delivery that provides a receipt within 30 days of changing their business or residence address. Willful failure to notify the California Secretary of State of a change of address is punishable as an infraction by a fine of up to $500. Residential address. An applicant must provide both a business address and residence address on the notary public's application. The notary public applicant may provide a mailing address that is different from their business and residence address. Business addresses. As part of the business address, a notary public must state the name of the business for which the notary public will perform a majority of their notarial services. Notaries public who will perform services for an employer or at the employer's business location should list the name and address of their employer. If the notary public is not performing a majority of their notarial services for an employer, is not employed or is self-employed, then the Secretary of State's office requests that the self or self-employed be entered for the name of the business on the application. If there will be no single location where the notary public will perform a majority of their notarial services, the business address will be at the location where the notary public performs the greatest number of services or the address where the notary public receives mail related to their notary public commission. The notary public may not use a commercial mailbox or post office box as the address for his or her residence or principal place of business unless the notary public also provides the California Secretary of State with a physical street address of their principal place of residence. The California Secretary of State must have record of a notary public's actual residence street address. A mailing address different from the business and resident address is not required, but may be used if a notary public receives mail at a post office box or private commercial mailbox. Any change to any of the three addresses inserted in the notary public application or to any previous address change notification must be reported to the California Secretary of State. For example, if a notary public indicated on the application for appointment that the notary public would perform services at the employer's location and the notary public's employment ends for any reason, then the notary public must notify the California Secretary of State of another business address and may state that they are now self or self-employed or provide the name and address of the new employer. If a notary public moves to a new home, then the notary public must notify the California Secretary of State of the new residence address. If a notary public chooses to have correspondence sent to a post office box and the notary public cancels the post office box contract, then the notary public must notify the California Secretary of State of a new mailing address. The notification to the California Secretary of State can be by letter or by the change of address form that can be found on the California Secretary of State's website. A best practice tip, in addition to the new address, the notification should include the name of the notary public exactly as it appears on the commission. 
the commission number, and whether the address being changed is a business, residence, or mailing address. If the change is to a business address, the notification should state the name of the business that is located at the new address. If that is where the notary public will perform a majority of the notarial services, or that the notary public will be self-employed. There is no fee to submit an address change form or address change letter. If the address of a notary public's principal place of business changes from one county to another, although not required, the notary public may take and file a new oath of office and bond, or may file a new oath of office and a copy of the original bond in the county where the new business address is located. If the notary public decides to make a new filing within 30 days of filing, the notary public must obtain a new official seal that includes the name of the new county and where the notary public has relocated. A good tip, when a new seal is obtained, the old seal must be defaced or destroyed since it no longer complies with the statutory requirements to state the county where the oath and bond are filed. Name changes. If a notary public changes his or her name, then the notary public must complete and send a name change form to the California Secretary of State. The form is available on the California Secretary of State's website. There is no fee charged for updating a notary public's name with the California Secretary of State. The notary public will receive an amended commission from the California Secretary of State with the new name, but the commission number and the commission expiration date will remain the same. Within 30 days of the date of issuance of the amended commission, the notary public must file a new oath of office and an amendment to the bond with the county clerk of the county in which the principal place of business is located. Responding to written requests of the California Secretary of State. A notary public has two separate duties to respond to written requests of the California Secretary of State. A notary public must respond by certified mail or any other means of physical delivery that provides a receipt within 30 calendar days of receiving a written request for information from the California Secretary of State relating to official acts performed by the notary public. Within the time specified and in the written request by the California Secretary of State, a notary public must furnish the California Secretary of State certified copies of his or her notarial journal or any portion of the journal that is requested. Please note that the 30-day time period for a request for information does not apply to the requirement to provide certified copies of the notarial journal 
or portions of the journal. Respond as redirected in the written request. Agreement with private employers. A notary public employed by a private employer may be called upon to provide notarial services as part of his or her employment. The law permits a private employer and an employee who is a notary public to, to agree that the employer will pay the premiums on the notary public's official surety bond and the cost of any stamps or other supplies required in connection with the appointment as a notary public or for performing notarial duties for the employer. The agreement may provide that the fees collected by the notary public for performing notarial acts as part of his or her employment are to be remitted or turned over to the employer for deposit in the fund from which the employee is paid. If the employer and the notary public have an agreement for the employer to pay bond premiums and costs for performance of notarial duties, the employer may limit the employee to provide notarial services solely to transactions directly associated with the business purpose of the employer during work hours. However, the notary public employee still can perform notarial acts outside of the ordinary course of employment on their own time. A notary public employee is responsible for following California law, regardless of their employer's demands. Performing an improper notarial act could result in civil or criminal liability for the employer and for the notary public employee. An employer who requests that a notary public perform acts that do not comply with the California law should be referred to the California Government Code Section 8225, which provides that any person who co coerces or in any manner influences a notary public to perform an improper act is guilty of a misdemeanor. Here's an example. Perry Paralegal is employed by a California lawyer, Adam Attorney, who is a sole practitioner and specializes in wills, trusts, and probate. Adam Attorney requests that Perry Paralegal obtain a notary public commission. So Adam Attorney paid for Perry Paralegal to attend a notary public education class and paid for Perry Paralegal's exam and bond. After a commission was issued to Perry, Adam Attorney reimbursed Perry Paralegal for the cost of filing his oath and bond and the cost of buying his sealed journal and a supply of attachable jurat and acknowledgement certificates. Perry signed a written agreement to perform notary public services during regular office hours only at Adam Attorney's discretion and direction to collect fees for all services performed during regular office hours and to deliver all fees collected for services performed during regular office hours to Adam Attorney's accountant. 
Perry paralegal sister Sissy asked Perry to come to her house after hours to acknowledge an interspousal transfer deed she signed. Perry may perform the acknowledgement after regular office hours, even though Adam has not directed Perry to perform this acknowledgement. Perry may also perform the acknowledgement and charge the statutory permitted fee for his services if he wishes, without delivering the fee to Adam Attorney Accountant. This concludes Part A of Chapter 1. At this time, please record your time for this module on your timesheet provided in your workbook. We'll move on to Chapter 1, Parts B and C, discussing the commission and managing a commission.